Also something related very much to the conversation, the Bank of Ghana, Occupy Bank of Ghana demonstration, that has partly led us to where we are now. We have the minority leader, Dr. Kassilato Forsen, addressing uh, the crowd currently, speaking to the media. Let's hear what he has to say. Economic crimes that we are seeing today, we think that this particular governor should not be allowed to stay in office. He's a printer. And we all know what printing does. Printing of money is like an alcoholism. The perceived good effect comes immediate, and the hangover comes after the party. This Ekufuado government, together with the gov governor, hasn't been fair to the people of Ghana. In fact, Governor Addison printed for President Ekufuado for them to live a champagne lifestyle on an appetite budget. We can't continue this way. Today, look at what is happening to our economy. Ghanaians are struggling, finding it very difficult to survive. In fact, some are struggling to eat three times in a day. We can't continue this way. And so clearly, clearly, what is happening in this country cannot continue. We want this government out. The governor must go. And, and, and the president must be allowed to appoint a new set of Bank of Ghana team. And that's what we're waiting for. We have, we have the minority leader here, Kassela Tufosin. Uh, let, let, let's, let's find out from it. You. You're live on Joy News on the AM show right now. Um, the last time you spoke on Joy FM, you had disagreements. You said that um, you had disagreements with the police on the route for this demonstration. We want to find out, is the minority, um, are the protesters going to go with the police directly? The route, so we are ready to work with the Ghana Police Service. They are indeed here to protect us. This protest is organized by the minority in parliament, the official opposition in this country. We have every right under the constitution to protest. And as part of our oversight responsibilities, we can use this route to express our revulsion against the conduct of the central bank. Our position is simple. The Ghana Police Service must show us where the security zone ends, the so-called security zones. We will comply with that. We will get to the end of the security zone with the protesters. And at that point, I, together with the leadership of the NDC uh, minority in parliament, must be allowed to walk to the central bank to present petition that should be received by the governor himself. He must be the one to receive our petition. I won't just hand over to him, we'll read it to his hearing and would we'll demand his exit today. If he fails to exit, there will be a series of actions against him. So, so what happens if the governor of the Bank of Ghana does not come out to receive I, I your petition? Then we will not live there. You will not live there? We will not live there until he, 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 he receives the pe petition. You stay there throughout the night? No, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll, tomorrow? We'll, we'll live till Daikindong. We'll stay there till Daikindong come. He must be the one to receive the position. Nothing more, nothing less. Not even a rep from no, the central bank. No, 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 no. Him. But we are not. We, 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 we are. We are not. We are not protesting against staff. We are protesting against the conduct of a governor. So don't you believe that against the conduct of the governor? And and our position is that he should be the one to receive it. No one else. We are not handing over the petition to any other person. Not his deputies, but he himself. And you're demanding that he shouldn't only receive the petition, but also stand there and listen to you read it out to him. He must hear the content of the petition. What happens when we give it to him and he fails to read it? We want him to hear it and give him the justification why it is in his own interest and the interest of the people of Ghana for him to say bye-bye to the central bank. Okay. Thank you for speaking to us. You just had the uh, minority leader, Kassela Tufosin. Um, he just arrived here on the ground. Uh, right now, he's meeting the leadership of the Ghana Police Service, who will be maintaining order here um, on the ground. Let's hear what this conversation is about. But, but we've seen many of the minority um, members here arriving here on the ground. 
an aide to former President John Mahama, Felix Ofosukwachi, also just arrived here on the ground. Yeah. Um, let's speak to him. Uh, Felix, you're welcome. We're live on Joy News. Yeah. I just interacted um, with the minority leader, and he was telling me that if the governor of the central bank fails to come out to receive your petition, you're going to stay there till thy kingdom comes. Of course, we want to send a clear signal to him that we are not impressed with his abysmal performance. We know that he has conspired with President Akufuado, Alaji Baumia, and Ken Ufoyata to do enormous damage to the Ghanaian economy, which damage has resulted in the plunging of millions of Ghanaians into excruciating hardships and poverty. For that reason, we have decided to send a signal that we are unhappy about this situation. And we expect that as a public servant who is paid with the Ghanaian taxpayer's money, he will show respect to the people of this country by coming out to receive a petition which codifies our disagreement and disenchantment with his management style, which has ensured the bankruptcy of the central bank and the bankruptcy of the Ghanaian economy. Okay, so we, we look forward to seeing him. Okay, Fellas, we want you to hold on for us right there. We want to hear what the police is saying and then we'll get back to you. And then the host of other MPs, just to assure them that we are here very early, as you can see, managing traffic, ensuring that everything is secure and safe for you. Just to give you assurance that we are here. Greetings from the Inspector General of Police and the Police Administration. We are all here. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Um, and then, representative from the police headquarters, let me also say that we are grateful. Thank you so much. We are grateful. But um, I want to assure you that the NDC minority does not mean harm. Thank you. We are going to embark on a simple, peaceful protest. It is my belief that this protest will be one of the most peaceful protests we have ever witnessed. We are going to stick to our agreement. We will move from here as and when we are ready. We will stick to the route. We will do a U-turn. And that is where we have a disagreement on where we should turn. We believe that at the end of the day, we will terminate at the end of your security zone. But, but, the leadership of the NDC minority, which you know is not a large group, must be allowed to see the governor at the central bank to deliver our petition to him as a person. Because we think that what we are doing is in the interest of this country. And we believe that it is in the interest of every citizen for us to do what we are embarking on. And this will go a long way to improve on our governance and the way our democracy is going. Democracy is shaped over a period through things like what we are doing, to enforce the law. The only thing missing in our democracy today is accountability, where citizens are held accountable to their actions and inactions. This particular governor has caused so much harm to the people of Ghana. He has single-handedly, working with the economic management team, deprived and impoverished the ordinary Ghanaian. A minimum of 850,000 Ghanaians has been moved down the poverty line because of his action. And I have always said that printing of money is like alcoholism. The more you print, the bad it becomes. And it should be remembered that when you print money, the good effect comes immediately, perceived good effect. But the hangover comes after the party. This Akufuado government hasn't been fair to the people of Ghana. And that is why we are doing what we are doing. This governor printed money to finance the champagne lifestyle on a petition budget of this administration. Here we are as a country. Everyone is struggling. And that is why we are doing what we are doing. We urge you, just protect us, but make arrangements for us to protect us, for the governor to be ready to receive our petition in person. As for that one, as for that one, we will not uh, compromise on it. We want him to meet me, or together with the NDC leadership in Parliament, to receive that petition. Until he receives it, we are not leaving there. That one, we need to get him to receive that petition. That is all what we are asking for. 
it is the one that has committed these atrocities against the people of Ghana, not members of staff. The power in the central bank is wielded through the governor of the central bank. He must listen to us and receive our petition. Simple. That's all what we are asking for. On behalf of the NDC minority, let me also express our appreciation to the Ghana Police Service. Even though we tried to put impediment in our way from the beginning, but in the end, we have agreed to disagree. We have agreed to disagree. That's the beauty of democracy. My regards to the IGP and the entire staff of the Ghana Police Service. I can assure you, this protest will be a very just had the minority leader, Castiela Tufosan, in that interaction with the leadership of the police here on the ground. Order. Let's continue the conversation with um, Phyllis Bashio Fosu. Uh, a lot of the disagreement has been with the rules for this demonstration and the final uh, point where you're going to end um, the protest. How significant is, you know, the hashtag occupying um, the B, the Bank of God. No, you see, a demonstration is not an everyday activity. And a demonstration is not called for fun. It is intended to send a signal over a disagreement or dissatisfaction with a particular conduct. So the route that is chosen for that protest is significant and important. I do not see why it should be a problem for Ghanaians to match to the Bank of Ghana to present a position to the governor. I do not see which uh, serious violation of law and order that would constitute. So I'm quite frankly surprised that the police wants to create the impression that it is such a major difficulty and that they cannot offer security. The people who have showed up for this demonstration have no intention of going to cause chaos or going to engage in any unlawful acts. They just want to show presence at the destination where the greatest harm has been done to the Ghanaian economy. So I don't think that any problem should arise. The police should have adequate capacity to ensure that no law, no law is breached or that law and order is not undermined. And therefore, we are determined to achieve that objective of going to the Bank of Ghana to present our petition to the governor. Why the Bank of Ghana and not the Jubilee House like we've seen in recent time? If you say that the back stopped with the president, Absolutely. one would say that it should be aware. at the we Jubilee are House, aware. not we the are Bank aware of Ghana. That it is the president and the sidekick, Alaji Baumia, who are behind the collapse of the Ghanaian economy. We are fully aware of that. But the governor is symbolic to the extent that it symbolizes institutional decay. You know, the governor has adequate powers in Ghanaian law to prevent what happened. He has a right to refuse to comply with any request that has detrimental effects on the Ghanaian economy, but he didn't do it. So the protest is symbolic in that it is to send a signal to any and everybody conspiring with the Akufuado Baumia government to do damage to this Ghanaian economy that the people of Ghana will hold them accountable. So it is the first in a series of steps to drum home that point. And, and what happens if the governor and his two deputies, what happens if they do not resign? Well, we will not relent. We will not relent in making that demand until he goes. So a, a real showdown is about to take place. A real showdown is Absolutely. About to take place. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. We are here. Join us is definitely here. Sure. We're going to keep tabs on what, what is happening. Uh, let's speak to Enus Afuseni. Uh, let's speak to Enus Afuseni. We are live. We are live on Join News. Well, so you just in your shot right now. Minority leader Castella Tufosin just finished this meeting with the Ghana Police Service. Now in a brief interaction with some party supporters. Before they leave this point. Hundreds, hundreds, rather thousands of supporters of the NDC concerned Ghanaians have all converged here at Obraspo 
as early as 6 a.m. We saw people arriving here on the ground. Police also here as early as 6 a.m. with their crowd control vehicles. At 6 a.m., when I got here, I saw three buses full of police officers here. The minority leader in his address at a public forum on occupying protest on the Occupy BOG protest. You remember the University for Professional Studies Accra? He stated the reasons why they are protesting and why the governor of the Bank of Ghana and his deputies must resign. That presentation was on the 31st of August. And amongst others, the minority leader, who you can see in your shot right now, among others said they're embarking on the occupied BOG protest march to back their demand for the immediate resignation of the governor of the Bank of Ghana and his two deputies. He retreated at that point some minutes ago. Their reason for demanding the resignation of the BOG governor, they say the BOG governor and his deputies have mismanaged the Bank of Ghana and illegally and excessively printed money between 2019 to 2022 in contravention of the Bank of Ghana Act, leading to a hyperinflation of 54.1. Let's get closer and see what is happening. A lot of party faithfuls, a lot of Ghanaians who have arrived here. You can hear them screaming, leader. Let me speak to Reverend Jackson, one of the protesters. Let's talk to him. He's a pastor and he's taking part in today's protest. Hi, sir. What's your name? My name is Reverend Jackson. Reverend Jackson, yes, you were here as early as, as 6 o'clock yes, a.m. when I came here in the morning. Uh, tell me, why are you taking part in this protest? Because I'm Ghanaian. Things are bad. Watch. There's some, let, the, let the someone speak for yourself. Let the someone speak. Have you seen it? Yes. Corruption, everything. And Addison must go. Addison must go. Addison must go. Yes. Let's see what you have on your uh, big. This is this is a mini billboard. It is not a placard. It's a billboard. I intentionally did it. Okay. Hold on for me. Let's hear some of the revolution songs you are singing. Hold on for me. songs as the protesters walk through the principal streets of Accra. Revolution songs, protest songs, freedom songs, all of that in a bit. Let's come back to you, um, Reverend Jackson. 
You say, what? Stop corruption. On your mini billboard, you have stop corruption. Yes, of course. Um, and TV, uh -huh. stop pollution yeah. and contamination. Our environment, that's what I'm saying for you. Ghanaians are suffering. Yes, of course. We can make Ghana in yes. yes. a better yes. place. Yes. Let's fix Ghana. Is it not true? What? Is it not true? Too much and corruption in Ghana. Everything is corruption. Why? Our president promised us that the corruption he will, he will, he will protect the public public face. And look at what is happening now. Sister Adapa, one million dollars. Do you know? Can you imagine how, how many how many buildings are the school buildings or the bridges or the light electricity or how do you call it? Are the traffic lights? That one million dollars can can do. Everything is corrupt. I am disappointed in my president. I am disappointed. When they are, when when they when they want when they want the power, they come to we the pastors to pray for them. They want that if if they want to uh, 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 do their how do you call it campaign, they come to they come to our, 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 our churches for their campaigns. When they are finished, when they finish getting the votes, they, they said we should we shouldn't interfere in the in the politics. It is a lie. The Bible is about politics. So we uh, from henceforth, every demonstration about Ghana, I will come. I will. You are part of the clergy, and the clergy has been accused of not, you know, speaking out. The clergy has been accused of not. You know, speaking when it matters. You know something? Let me show you something. And, and some people are saying that it's a subtle endorsement of what is happening. Do you know? And it's 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 also points to the fact that perhaps things are just being exaggerated. Things are not as bad as you know uh, others would want. We are all in. We are all in Ghana. Have you traveled to any country? We are all in Ghana. So why is the clergy? They are quiet because of their selfish interest. Uh, uh, apart from Rebecca Kofi Odro, nobody's speaking. So I have decided that I should come and uh, do my best. Hold on, hold on for me. Hold on. For me. Yes, yes, of course. So things are bad. So Addison, Addison. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. One at a time. Hold on, hold on. Addison, hold on. Addison must go. That is our that is our that is our request. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay. Reverend Jackson. Jackson, yes sir. Okay. Thank you for talking to us. Uh, well, well, let's speak to former Adenta aspirant, um, NDC aspirant, Asibi Awuni. Let's talk to her, let's find out from her why she's also taking part in um, in the protest. Hi, Asibi Awuni, welcome to join us live on Tell us why are you taking part in this protest? I see the Ghana flag around. Yes, um, representing the citizens of Ghana here, we are just demanding better accountability and better running of our economy and the Bank of Ghana. Okay, so th that's why you're here? Yes. Great. Can you tell me what you make of the state of affairs um, right now in this country? Uh, I believe that the, so far this government has been a scam, has been a fraud. There's been so many things that have been mismanaged. Uh, there's no accountability, there's no credibility. The people of Ghana are suffering while they are looting and sharing monies between themselves, their family and friends, which I believe is not fair to the people of Ghana. There are those, there are neutrals who also think that we find ourselves between the cut between the devil, cut between the devil, and then the deep blue sea. They think that politicians are all the same. And this will complain, they come into power and still repeat the same mistakes that they are complaining about today. You are a member of the NDC. What do you what what, what do you what, what do you make of that? I believe that it's just one uh, simple question you need to ask yourself. Look at your living conditions now and compare it to a few years back. How different is it? When you look at inflation rates, is at an all-time high. If you look at the dollar, uh, the exchange rates, it's crazy. We are suffering. Petrol prices have been increased. Ghanaians are suffering. And then when you look at the expenses that this government has been doing for their personal interests, at the expense of things like providing hospital, uh, health care for the citizens, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. So you should just look at... So all of this feeding into the conversation we're having about change in our political system, change in the way things are being run. Well, those who are participating in that demonstration, the Occupy Bank of Ghana uh, protest, they are talking about revolution, changing the guard 
at the central bank. But to conclude with our conversation in the studio, what then is the way forward? And is this an expression of the change we're looking forward to? Gentlemen, that's how we'll cap off the conversation on that third force uh, that we are discussing this morning, whether it's even viable and what it will take to get there. So where do we go from here as far as that discussion is concerned? I'll start in the studio yeah. with do you, Doctor. Well, I think it is a matter of how it comes about. Uh, the problem we have is that we keep thinking about it in a linear way uh, with respect to one particular individual. But when the time comes for these things to happen, it usually is a combination of so many different forces. Mm. And in that sense, uh, those forces bring together their strengths and compensate each other for their weaknesses. And that's what enables them to present that different alternative. It's not solution. a one-man thing. It's not a one-man thing. Mm. But the important thing that binds them all together is that we are offering something different and something that will be better than what is there at the moment. So that alternate political solution and the roadmap for that is what will unfold and must unfold. It must be based on reforms and restoration to a system where we are working for the interest of the many and not a few. However you like to describe it, etc., that is what people are yearning for. Nobody pushes a vehicle which does not contain their interest or their luggage, to, for that matter. So if we want to all push together as a country, we must all have that vested interest. And we must allow the national interest to subsume the partisan and parochial interest. That is where we went off the road, and now we have to get back on the road with that. However we do it, whatever combination of things that we use to do it, right. that is the essential thing that must be done now. And you cannot say that, oh, we will get back on the road later. We will travel a bit on the wrong way for a little bit while longer. No, the quicker you get back onto it, the better for you. Thank you, Dr. Abusakara Foster. Let me come to uh, Dr. John Osai Kwapong. Hello, Dr. Osai Kwapong. Yes, Benjamin. So the same beat as we uh, conclude the conversation. You've seen, you've seen the demonstration, you listened to our interaction in Kumasi. Where do we go from here as far as that discussion on the third force is concerned? Um, just like, you know, uh, Dr. Sakara said, we, uh, it will take a combination of different forces. Um, it will take people recognizing that they have a personal stake uh, in the system, um, that whatever happens, you know, uh, whether the system works or not, um, it also affects them on a daily basis. Um, and once they are able to tie their everyday life, everyday interest to what happens or doesn't happen, mm. then you could get that critical mass that would say either we are demanding more um, from our two main political parties or for the first time we would really follow through this um, thirst that we keep saying we have for an alternative that will truly look out for our interest. Mm. Thank you uh, for those succinct comments. Suleimana, you have the final word. We just lost uh, Suleimana Braima, but he joined the conversation, the Executive Director of Media Foundation for West Africa. Uh, if time had uh, been extended, I would have run something else by him, but we've lost him. Dr. Jonas Sai Kwapong is a CDD fellow, and of course, we also had Dr. Abu Sakara Foster, founder, National Interest uh, Movement. I'm still curious. We'll find out whether next year you'll be, well, you'll be lacing uh, your boots to do anything. Let's examine the political terrain. <laughs> let's examine the Let's see some more movement in the tectonic plates. But I'm very happy today to see the collaboration between the police uh, and the, uh, the, the protesters uh, because it shows that at least there's a recognition that there's a right to protest, mm. provided it is peaceful. But I hope it is not only because these are uh, minority leaders right. and that they're also parliamentarians, mm. and that if they were youth, their reaction would have been different. different. Because right. the right of every citizen is equal. Right. And we must begin to see a situation where the police treat everybody with respect as citizens uh, that have their due right to protest. Right. And also I encourage our youth to also be peaceful in the way they go about their protests, 
that will only encourage more and more people to come. Right. I, when we had the first Fix the Country pro, uh, demonstration, I was there. Uh, the second one with John Tekwe, I was there. And each time I kept telling them, the more peaceful the protest is, the more you'll get other people coming. And in that second one, housewives were there. Yeah. If they know nothing untoward is going to happen, they're all, everybody is feeling the pressure. But who will come out and support you? And it depends that's... how you conduct yourselves. Uh, that's that's a, a you know a very forceful point that you make. But let's let's reconnect now uh, to the Obrasport area, where that protest actually has uh, is taking off uh, from Maxwell Agbaba. My colleague is there. Let's reconnect and find out what is happening on the ground. Do you think you go to heaven? If the people are not happy, God is not happy. Are you getting me? And Bible said, if the righteous rule, the people rejoice. But if the wicked person is leading, the people suffer. So Nanado is the one to tell us that the scripture is fulfilling himself. Why are you wicked? Is he, he, he's telling us that the scripture is fulfilling himself. He's my leader. I pray for him. To have long life, I pray for him to rule the nation very well. But when you get the time, when the people were lamenting, shouting, you refuse to listen to us. What do you expect to, the people to do? So the demonstration today, we will do it today. You, you think the president is not? You think the president is not listening to the people? The president is not listening to us. Really? Yes. The system is very difficult. There is no money in the system. But see what Bank of Ghana did. Are you getting me? See what the Bank of Ghana did to us. We the citizen. There's hardship. There's no see. People, I, I give money to people. Even today, I'll give money to people to get some food to eat. Are you getting me? I pay people to school fees. I pay people school fees. So what again? What again? We cannot carry gun. We cannot. We will not need to carry cutlass and things. We have to talk to you. A leader must listen to the people and do what people want. You are here to serve us. You are here. You are, you are, you are here. You are here. You are here to serve us. If since you are here to serve us, you must serve us, serve us well. Okay. Thank you for talking to us, yes, Reverend Sebastian Akpalu. Akpalu, yeah. Christ Kingdom, the founder of Christ Kingdom Worldwide Ministries. Okay. And you're here to take part in the protest in your castle. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you for speaking to us. Let well, more, uh, more members of the minority are arriving here um, on the ground. In your shot right now is Lingo Pram Pram MP, um, Sam George. Also arriving here. That's all. That's all. The protesters have not moved yet, but we're getting signals, we're picking signals from the leadership in the next 30 minutes. Let's talk to Lingo from Pram MP, um, Sam George. Yes, hi. Welcome to Joy News, to live on Joy News. Um, you just arrived here on the ground. What do you make of what's happening? Oh, I've been here for one hour. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah I saw you in your I've car. I've been here for one yeah. hour. I've just yeah. been monitoring and watching. But everything is fine. I think the numbers are coming up. People are showing up. And uh, we are, we are, we're headed in the right direction. I'm sure that giving about another hour, we'll be moving. Yeah, but... I, I was speaking to the minority leader, Kassela Tufosin, and he was saying that if you get to um, the central bank, the BOG, you want the governor himself to come out and receive the petition. If he doesn't come out, you are not moving. You're going to stay there until the kingdom comes. The governor is a coward. Mm. Dr. Edison is a coward. I mean, and this is not, this is not going to be the first time. I serve, I've served on the Public Accounts Committee of Parliament for seven years. And at least every year we invite him twice to appear because of the Auditor General's report. And I can say on authority that Dr. Edison himself has appeared before the Public Accounts Committee maybe two or three times in seven years. He's a coward. He runs away from his own work, from his own failings. Most times he sends his deputy, Maxwell. And I won't be surprised that today it will be Maxwell who would have the balls to come out. Edison himself won't come out. Edison is a coward and I'm putting it to him. You are a coward and you have failed. You are a colossal failure because look, where we sit as a country, let's call a spade a spade. 
We have 196 central banks for 196 countries across the world. In 2022, the central bank of Ghana, the Bank of Ghana, came last. We had the worst performing currency in the world. Our currency was worse than the currency of Yemen, was worse than the currency of Syria, worse than the currency of South Sudan, worse than the currency of Yemen, worse than the currency of Ukraine, Zimbabwe. Our currency was worse. So, come on. If you if you if you if you if you if you sent your child to school and the teacher you ask to teach your child or the lesson teacher who is teaching your child at home goes to write a licensure exam and in Ghana comes last, would you continue? But don't what even annoys us as young people the most is that in 2022 they increase their allowances to themselves by hundred percent and pay themselves 8.7 million as allowances for coming last. This is the failing of the governor of the Bank of Ghana. This is the same governor of the Bank of Ghana who in 2022, apart from borrowing in excess of the 5%, 38 billion, to the, to the government of Ghana in, 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 in clear violation of the Bank of Ghana Act, proceeded to spend over 156 million on what they call maintenance of vehicles. Go and check STC and VIP, how much they spent on managing their fleets for the whole of 2022. The Bank of Ghana spent him more money than them. In 2022, Philip Edison spent 97 million Ghana cities on foreign travels. 97 million Ghana cities. From 2012, the Bank of Ghana has every year been making 1.5 billion as profit. Edison alone in 2022 makes a 60 billion Ghana City loss. Now, let me tell you what this is. 60 billion is, 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 is about, is more than $5 billion. Now, Ghana has gone to the IMF for 3 billion over three years. So basically, 1 billion, about average of 1 billion a year. And in one year, Edison is losing more than five times what the whole country says will fix our problems. So who is our problem? If the whole country needs one billion from the IMF every year for three years to fix our problem, and Edison in one year can superintend the loss of five billion, who is our problem? So fair to say that Edison is our problem and not President Tukufuado like others want us to believe? Oh, the, 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 the appointees are a reflection of the appointor. Been a colossal failure. President Akufuado will be studied by your children and grandchildren on the on being the worst president. He's going to be cited in political science classes as how not to lead a country. President Akufuado and Dr. Bawumia will be studied in economic classes on how to collapse a functional economy that was handed over to you on the basis of rhetorics and theory. That is going to be their legacy. Because we studied also for introducing free senior high school. Free senior high school. What is free about senior high school today? You send your child to school for four weeks and then you have to pay a lesson teacher for 20 weeks to co co cover up. Paying the lesson teacher is more expensive than if your child was in school before free SHS. The finance minister himself doesn't agree with that policy because you can't have a policy where even people who were paying $12,000 for A-levels or for in, in, in junior school in year nine, come to senior high school and say they can't pay free senior high school must be selected why are we not issuing leap grants to everybody in ghana leap livelihood empowerment against poverty why are we not giving it to everybody in ghana why are we targeting is, and selecting is this something the ndc will do because the ndc's policy because the leap money has always been just a mega no but the point i'm making with leap is simple you target those who are vulnerable you don't you don't make it for everybody if you had decided you wanted to give leap to every Ghanaian, the government would have collapsed and that's why we're saying that the educational sector is collapsing because of this wholesale approach you must allow those who can pay pay you you should be able to give subsidies to some people and some people must be able to get it for free but if it's targeted also people with influence sometimes will find their way around the system and still benefit and that's why and, the, and that's why the president and his appointees must build a system that will not be abused you understand me and so you when you have baumia who was touted to us as an economic whiskey we were told that baumia knows where the money is and now baumia has come and has run away from the economy for which he was sold to us and is attempting to make himself an IT boy. I mean, 
Ask yourself, what does the Bawea know in IT? What does he know? He's run away from all the lectures he gave at Central University. Did he give you a lecture in ICT in Central University? You know, and they have failed this economy. Okay, so and instead of them, instead of them being humble enough to deal with the fundamental issues we're raising, Baumia is busy campaigning at this time with state resources in convoys of over 40 cars, with taxpayers' money, seeking re-election. My goodness, people have lost their sense of conscience. Ask yourself, what is happening to the young people of our country? The hunger and desperation. And I keep repeating the advice that the Asante Hini gave to Nana Adodan Kwaku in 2017. When he went to pay his first skeptical on him, he said to him, he said, people voted against the NDC in 2016 because of hunger and anger. And so Akufuado should be minded today. And look, forget that I'm an NDC person. You were in Ghana in 2016. The situation in 2016 and the situation today, 2016 felt like heaven. The NDC is not perfect. But look, where we are today, this is abysmal. We can't get any lower. Thank you for talking to us. We just had Ningo Pram Pram MP, um, Sam George. Now, chants of revolution songs have started. Thousands of people, yeah, thousands. Thousands of people have converged here to protest. And that is what is happening now, uh, chants of revolution and chants of uh, wanting the central bank's governor out. Well, that is the Occupy Bank of Ghana uh, conversation or protest ongoing. We'll be reconnecting from there with Maxwell Agbagba, our man on the ground. But we come back.